Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm one of the youth librarians at Skokie Public Library, and joining me today is... Desi! This week has been rainy, which is actually perfect because today we are here to talk about thunder and lightning. Desi has been interested in meteorology. That's weather science. Mm -hmm, since he was tiny and nothing has changed. Well, I'm a lot taller. Okay, nothing has changed except his height. He is as excited about weather events as ever. So start us off, Desi. What are thunder and lightning anyway? Believe it or not, lightning causes thunder. Really? Yeah. You know how lightning is just one big electric spark? Hmm. Like when you shock yourself with static electricity in the wintertime? Actually, exactly like that, except a lot taller. Thunder happens when a giant electric spark, also known as a lightning bolt, moves from a cloud in the sky down to the ground. Lightning is hot, hotter than the sun. Yikes. Yeah, and as it travels down toward the earth really fast, it heats the air around it, causing it to expand. And when it's gone, the air cools and snaps back, causing a massive vibration or a sound wave that we hear as thunder. Oh, cool. That explains why we hear the thunder after we see the lightning. Yes. Did you know there is an easy and cool way to find out how far away lightning is? I did know that. Next time you see a flash of lightning, count the seconds. One Mississippi. Until you hear the thunder. Divide the number of seconds by five, and that's how far away lightning is. Shall we demonstrate? Zap! Whoa! One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Boom! Whoa! <laughs> okay, five divided by five is? One. So we can see that our lightning is about a mile away. Cool. So now we know that thunder is a sound wave that is caused by lightning traveling through the air. But what is lightning? I mean, I know it's a gigantic spark, but what causes it? Okay, you know how clouds are made up of water and snow and dust particles? Ah, uh, yes. I seem to remember a very cool video about this. So those particles are up there bonking into each other all the time. And each time that happens, it creates a small electrical charge. These charges, both positive and negative, build up over time. Oh, I actually know this part. So the positive charges head up to the top of the cloud and the negative charges group on the bottom. So the top of the cloud is positively charged and the bottom of the cloud becomes negatively charged. Since opposites attract, the negative charges at the bottom of the cloud seek out positive charges in the earth. When the charges build up enough, a negative current zooms down to the earth from the cloud and a positive current zooms up to meet it. And zap! Electricity. Well, this all makes sense, but you know what I always say. Too much screen time melts your brain. Yes! And also, the best way to learn a new concept is through a catchy song. If you sing a catchy song, you'll never get it wrong. Particles crashing up in clouds make lightning flash and thunder loud when negative charges overcrowd and spark the sky asunder. Hot lightning moves upon its track, heating air which then contracts. This movement makes a mighty crack, and that's what we call thunder. And that brings us to our project. Today, we are going to demonstrate the awesome power of static electricity using tissue paper, a balloon, and a small piece of tape. The first thing that you're gonna do is design and decorate your tissue paper. Once you've cut your shape, ours is about eight inches, but you can experiment with different sizes. Tape just the end to a hard surface. Next, you're gonna charge up your balloon. Rub it on your head, or if you prefer, something wool for 20 to 30 seconds. This rubbing creates a negative charge. Remember the bottom of the cloud? Mm-hmm. Now, watch how the positive charge rushes up to meet it. Zap! Static electricity! Thanks for doing weather science with us today, junior meteorologists. We will see you next time. Until then, put up your umbrellas and stay dry.